I was 15, 16 years old and I walked into the gym and I was trying to do a bicep curl and I didn't know what I was doing. I felt really self-conscious. It felt like the whole world was looking at me. But in reality, everyone was sort of working, like worried about themselves and they mm. were all thinking the same thing. It's the same in many ways of, of business. Anything that's new, mm. everyone is winging it and working out as they go along. Okay, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so then you went to uni, what, what did you study at uni? So I went to Aston University and I studied business management. Okay. So I'm I'm considering potentially doing a business degree at some point, maybe like an MBA. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have sa- have said to me that maybe it's not particularly useful because once you've run a business, you learn a lot more about business by running it than by doing a degree. What what, um, what are your thoughts on, on that? Yeah, I think it depends. So we basically what we did at Aston is they have um, a common first year. I don't know how. Uh, consistent that is across mm. different universities and then the the aim of the common first year for all business students was to give you a solid grounding on everything so you did a couple of modules on legals accountancy modules finance maths um business mm. management um all these different things so i actually think that gave me a great grounding and it albeit we did make mistakes in the early days the fact that i knew about trademarks and how important yeah. it was intellectual property and had that basic knowledge it actually really really helped me and I was confident enough and understanding the different sort of classes of trademarks. I was getting trademarks early in, you know, Gymshark. Yeah. So it definitely gave me a basic knowledge. But yeah, I do agree. I think if you are going to run a business, then you are going to... It, I, I think they're sort of slightly separate. You won't learn the things you would learn starting a business through a degree, but equally yeah. vice versa. It, because running a business, you learn things as you do them. And the problem is, is because you, you don't know what you don't know. Yes. So if you don't know that you need trademarks or strong IP then you'll never think about it, whereas mm. the business course will actually give you that grounding. Yeah, so this is a problem we're having in our business right now, whereby I've sort of been making making shit up as I went along for the mm. last four years, and you know we've, we've now got a team of 12 people, and we're trying to hire like five more. Mm-hmm. And just even thinking, you know, like, what is a director of oper- operations? What's a director of marketing? Like, mm-hmm. that apparently that's a thing, and I just don't know what I don't know. And yeah. it's only when I speak to people who run businesses, and I describe my problems when they say, oh, yeah, it sounds like you need a, a director of marketing. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's the sort of stuff that you got a kind of reasonable foundation in before before starting Gymshark. Yeah, 100%. But I would also say that there's like this weird thing of there are there is a conventional way of running a business and mm. there's a, there is a way that you'll be taught. And that tends to be based on the old school business models. So yes, having a grasp of what a different the different areas of a C-suite will do is, is very, very important. But equally, like in your business, you're doing something that really hasn't ever been done mm. at a reasonable scale. Like granted, there's... There's massive like people, there's huge companies that will do similar sorts of things, but compared to where they'll be in 10, 20 years, it, mm. it's it completely un- so uncomparable. Yeah. So, so I guess it's it is reasonable, reasonable to make it up as we go along. And, but but, the other thing yeah. as well, and I speak about this quite a bit, so I've been really lucky to be around some incredibly inspiring, talented and successful business people. Like running businesses far, far larger than Gymshark. And all of them, to a degree, are winging it. Mm. Like, genuinely, all of them. So, again, it's like, I always think about it. And this is, it it hit me, it's going to sound weird, but it hit me when I first walked into the gym, right? I was 15, 16 years old, and I walked into the gym, and I was trying to do a bicep curl. And I didn't know what I was doing. I felt really self-conscious. You know, it felt like the whole world was looking at me and going, who's that kid messing around with, with those weights? In reality, everyone was sort of working, like worried about themselves and they Mm. were all thinking the same thing. And some of them were probably looking at me thinking, oh, he knows what he's doing when he doesn't. And it's it's the same in many ways of of business. Granted, there's some incredibly talented people and they've learned a lot. But anything that's new, Mm. everyone is winging it and working out as they go along, even up to the multi-billion dollar corporations. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, have you got have you got any examples of like when you when you realised that that was a thing in in the world of business? So basically, Gymshark has been built on Shopify since day one, pretty much. Like we we ended up moving off Shopify; it didn't go very well. We moved back, and we've had a, an incredible relationship with them for a long, long time. Mm. And I'm really fortunate because Harley, who's now president, and he's been he was the chief operating officer for a long, long time at, at Shopify. Um, there was a guy who ran Shopify Plus called Lauren. Um, brief conversations with Toby, who founded the business. And the fact that they sort of took us under their wing in many respects and sort of I would I would ask Harley questions and he would be like, I, you know, I don't know, we haven't worked out either. And this is yeah. one of the largest, I think this is Canada's biggest company or one of Canada's biggest company, for like thousands of employees, such an inspiring group of people. Mm. You know, there's other people that I've spoken to as well. There's um, a good friend of mine called Ajaz who runs, runs a company called AKQA. Again, I would ask him questions and he's just like, you can just work it out sort yeah. of thing it's, there's not this prescriptive rule book like 
some of the greatest minds in the world might not know the answer to your problems because yeah. they're unique and they need to be solved in a unique way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had a similar moment. It was, it was a few weeks ago. So we've got, we've got a guy on our team, uh, Jakob, who helps out with marketing and stuff. Yeah. And I was saying to Jakob, all right, Jakob, you know, we need this like, you know, dream director of marketing. I mm -hmm. want to be able to basically say to them that we want to hit 3 million YouTube subscribers next year and they'll be able to come up with a strategy. Yeah. And he was like, hmm. I'm not sure they would, uh, yeah. because if you imagine a director of marketing, maybe they've got an MBA or something like that. But he, he was saying that, like, you know, you as the YouTuber, you know far more about how to grow on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And these directors of marketing would be looking to you yeah. for how to grow their brands. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, but I just make it up as I go along. Mm. <laughs> he was like, yeah, but, you know, people would literally hire you to be a consultant to yeah. tell them how to grow on YouTube. Which just, again, speaks to that thing that everyone's, everyone's just figuring it out. It's true, it's true. And so we have a similar sort of thing where we were looking at, marketing but marketing is it's so many different things to different people we've actually sp moved it in a slightly different angle where we'll have like a chief of brand mm. and then marketing sits elsewhere in the business because then we would split our organic approach and our more quantitative approach to marketing yep. or, or like a paid approach yep. so listen everyone does things in different ways and equally i know companies that have a more conventional model that are wildly mm. successful as well so i just think it's what works for you yeah and i guess part of it is I suppose part of it is just like the semantics. Like, do you call it marketing? Do you call it brand? Yeah. Do you call it strategy? Like for mm -hmm. us, it's like, we call it content because most of our content is, most of our stuff is content, but then do yeah. you call it product? Do you call it operations? All, the, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And I think the boxes do have their place, but also just that recognition that, okay, does this department belong in operations or belong in marketing? Who cares? Like the point is they're researching content ideas. Exactly, exactly. Like when you get to the nuts and bolts of it, that's what you need to be thinking about rather than just the names. One, one thing I'm curious about, I saw your, you did a video about Black Friday, I think it was last year, where there was a lot of references to how you were working very closely with Shopify. Yeah. And that seemed really interesting to me because obviously I've been following Shopify for years and I know of Shopify as I pay $29 a month yeah. and I, I figure it out and do it myself and I message their support once in a while. Yeah. But it seems you guys have a much more like integrated, like what does that look like at Gymshark scale working with a company mm. like Shopify? So the, I think one, so we, we're very culturally aligned with Shopify. The way that Gymshark and Shopify works is very, very similar. Mm. Uh, and there's periods in time where there'll be a group of people from Shopify will fly over from Canada and spend time working in the Gymshark office, particularly around Black Friday and sort of sales periods. Okay. Um, and you wouldn't know, they wouldn't stick out. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like everyone's very, very similar. Because Gymshark has very, very high levels of traffic anyway. Mm. And we have super high levels of traffic around yeah. times like Black Friday. For whatever reason, Gymshark becomes super attractive around those sorts of times. Mm. I think it's because we tend not to do too many sales. Now, because the spikes are so high, there's been periods in the past where we've broken all of Shopify's records in terms of people jumping on the website yep. in, a, in a in a moment. So we basically need people on hand to make sure that the website is running in a robust way because we've had periods in the past where it has fallen apart and hasn't gone well. Okay. So what will tend to happen, so Black Friday that's just gone, Shopify will send a group of individuals over and we'll be managing the website live in our office. Obviously, there'll be Shopify staff, so they'll have access to all of Shopify systems. And then you'll have the Gymshark guys sort of next to them yeah. managing our side of things as well. Uh -huh. It's, that, it's, that, it's that would amazing. be quite exciting. It's like, like mission control. Yeah. Like it's incredible just to see it all going on because a lot of the sort of extra things and add-ons that we have onto our website and mm. a lot of even some of our analytics tools in real time will break just due to the amount of traffic that we're, that we're receiving in that moment. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I guess when you get to that level of scale, you're starting to solve these sorts of problems that... Yeah. It, it, yeah. That's stuff that I never thought we would have to solve for. But um, yeah, Shopify is such a great platform and that's why it works for us is they do really support us and help us during those sort of peak periods. Nice. Yeah, I actually got an email from one of their marketing people the other day being like, hey, we want to work with you about entrepreneurship content. And I was like, yes. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, 